Some pretty interesting developments this week, uh, having very little to do with pro hockey, although many would say this had everything to do with pro hockey, as the Canadian government decided it was going to get involved in how minor hockey was being run in Canada. Health Minister John Monroe and his provincial counterparts agreed to establish a committee to look into some of the abuses prevalent in amateur hockey in Canada. The committee, which will be made up of public servants, is to recommend steps to eliminate such abuses uses, including either provincial or federal legislation. The agreement came at a federal provincial conference of ministers responsible for sports and recreation. Monroe told a news conference after the closed meeting that there was a general approval of a working paper drafted by the federal government pinpointing the abuses. These abuses included contracts that sometimes require young boys to leave their hometowns to pursue hockey careers and the agreement between the Canadian Amateur Hockey Association and the National Hockey League. Some of the other abuses that uh, are going on, according to Health Minister Monroe, who, by the way, has an airport named after him in Hamilton, Ontario. Some of these other abuses included extremely long schedules, such as in the OHA Junior A Series, where players can play up to 80 games a season, and that according to Monroe, interferes with a boy's education. Uh, contracts, in, contracts in junior hockey, which set salary ceilings of $60 a week, and that would actually uh, still be an issue many years later. Uh, there was also an abuse of apparent control of the NHL over amateur operations through the CAHA NHL agreement. And in pro-amateur agreement, the payment of draft money to teams for whom the draftee played. The committee doesn't seem to like this. The committee felt it should be paid into the CAHA general funds for the development of hockey instead of just the teams lining their bankrolls. Uh, the committee was also concerned about playing rules designed primarily for professionals imposed on amateur players regardless of age. What they're worried about here, and this would come out a few years later, the body checking, all the other moves that uh, take place in pro hockey. What they're trying to do is indoctrinate your kids into the pro hockey style of game. And they really didn't care about the well-being and the welfare of the young player. Very, very, very few of the young players get to make the NHL, but on the off chance that one out of 10,000 might make it, they want to develop that one to be tough enough to endure the rigors of the professional game. Well, as you can imagine, there was swift reaction to this story uh, from all over the place. Clarence Tubby Schmaltz, the president of the Ontario Hockey Association, vigorously defended his group's Junior A League and has declared that neither the federal government nor the public is aware of some of the problems that actually do exist, according to Schmaltz. He was commenting in an interview on a report that a federal provincial uh, conference had decided with Health Minister John Monroe's agreement to investigate these perceived abuses. Schmaltz said, in defense of the Junior A people, I think the public should be made aware that the Ontario government threatened to put a 10% amusement tax on every ticket sold if there was not a $60 maximum weekly salary for players. The ceiling was one of the items mentioned, as we said earlier, in the uh, press release from Ottawa. This $60 maximum, according to Schmaltz, was put in to protect the arenas and teams from this levy. The government could add this levy even if one player was making more than $60. Now, Schmaltz also went on to defend the educational standards of junior A players and said that teams pay a staggering amount toward tuition fees. Schmaltz said that they have statistics to prove that the scholastic averages of junior A players are above the average of students in almost every city in the league. Any boy who isn't doing well 
is provided, according to Schmaltz, with a tutor. And Bill Hunter, the general manager of the Edmonton Oil Kings of the Western Canada Junior Hockey League and a key figure in the New World Hockey Association, he says the federal government should simply stay completely out of amateur sports except, of course, to lend assistance in building facilities. Of course, that assistance would consist of cold, hard cash, which above all is most important to Wild Bill Hunter. Now, Hunter was commenting on that report that we've given you about the government investigating amateur hockey. Hunter said they're welcome to investigate the Western Canada League. All we ask is that they print the facts about our league. What we're getting now from the government isn't the facts, but insinuation that can only serve to undermine the public's confidence in amateur sport. Hunter went on to say, quote, Look at the mess the government has made of the economy in this country. These same people now want to tell us how to run amateur sport. They don't know what they're talking about. That sounds a lot like Bill Hunter.